Good day, good people. My name is Kaba Sekwele and I'm an online math tutor here to help young children turn their struggles into their successes. Today's video is going to be a bit different. This one is mostly for parents who have kids that are in elementary school who want to help their children learn how to tell time. I'm going to be showing you a principle-based method of teaching your children how to tell time. If ever you want to do well in something practical, especially math related, you must understand the theory behind it. So for your child to have the ability to tell time well, they need to understand the theory behind telling time. Thus, before diving into teaching your child how to tell time practically, I'll be showing you how you can help them understand the theory behind telling time. So first, before teaching your child how to tell time, there are four main facts that your child needs to understand. But for them to to make sense of these facts you will need to use a visual aid. You might want to draw for them a shape, maybe a rectangle or a circle that will represent a 24 hour day. And as you move through the facts you need to keep adding additional details to the shape that you drew. Just help them make sense of the theory that you are sharing. So the first fact they need to know is that a day is split into two, the morning and the evening. Now onto your visual aid you can draw a line running right through your shape to illustrate a day being split into two equal parts. You can even color these two parts of the day in two different colors. If you feel like taking it a step further. A second fact they need to know is that a full day is cut into 24 equal parts and these parts are called hours. And also in your own words help them to understand that because a day is split into two the morning takes up 12 hours and the evening takes up the other 12 hours. Again as you're explaining this to them go to your visual aid and try to section the shape that you drew into 24 equal parts representing each hour of the day. The third fact your child needs to know is that each hour is split into 60 equal parts and these parts are called minutes. So go back to your visual aid and illustrate this by sectioning maybe just one hour into 60 equal parts representing the minutes. Now the fourth and final fact that your child needs to know is that time helps us to understand which part of the day we are in. It helps us to see which hour we are in out of the 24. This is just a rough guide of the facts that they need to know before moving on. So take the time to think about how you're going to explain these facts to your child using your own simple and easy to understand words. The average child probably understands some of these facts, but just cover them just to make sure that the rest of this process runs smoothly. Okay, so once you're done with that first part, now would be a great time for you to bring out an analog clock. And also don't throw away the visual aid, you're still gonna need that. Now it's time for us to explain the parts of an analog clock. There are four main parts of an analog clock that you are going to focus on. Your analog clock should only have 12 numbers on there representing the hours of the day. If so, explain to your child that those numbers represent the hours in a day. Then explain to them that we only focus on the first part of the day and the second part of the day at a time. Which is why the clock only has 12 numbers and not 24. Again, go back to that visual aid that you drew and remind them that a day is split into two parts just to make sure you're not losing them. The second part that you're going to be focusing on is the short arm. Explain to your child that the main job of the short arm is to tell us which hour in the day we are in. In other words, if your short arm is on or right after the number four, this means we are in the fourth hour of the morning or evening. The third part on your analog clock that we are going to focus on is the minutes. It would be best to get a clock that does have minutes on it. Otherwise, if you try and teach them time on a clock with no minutes on there, they may end up very confused. So if your clock does have minutes on them, help your child understand that there are only 60 minutes that are represented on the clock because each hour has only 60 minutes. Again, always refer back to that visual aid just to make sure they're not confused and explain to them that these minutes help us to see how far into the hour we are in. Again, this is just a guide. Take the time to think about how you're going to explain these things in simple and easy to understand words. This then leads us to the fourth point. The fourth part of the analog clock that we're going to focus on is the long arm. Explain to your child that the main job of the long arm is to tell us how many minutes we've spent in that hour. In other words, if your short arm is on on or right after the four, the long arm will tell us how many minutes we've spent into the fourth hour of the morning or evening. Again, regardless of how you want to phrase it, make sure that it's simple, easy to understand and refer back to your visual aid if need be. So now that you've laid the foundation for them by sharing those four facts with them and by explaining the important parts of an analog clock, only now can you teach them how to tell time. There are different ways in which you can teach a child how to tell time. To do this, I love asking my students questions that bring the point home. So instead of telling them how to tell time, I 
I would present them with an analog clock and then ask a series of questions that lead them to the right conclusion. It just keeps them engaged and helps them to focus for as long as possible. Really, you do not have to do this. You can just tell them how to tell time. However you prefer teaching them is up to you. But just to show you how I do it, I would start off by saying, let's say we are in the morning. Do you remember which arm tells us which hour in the day we are in? If they do say it's the short arm, then I would take the short arm and put it on a random number. Let's say the number four. And then I would ask them. So according to the clock, which hour in the day are we in? If they answer that correctly, I would then move on to the long arm. I would move the long arm onto one of the minutes on the clock and then ask them, according to the clock, how many minutes into the fourth hour of the morning are we? I would then give them time to think about it. And if they can't figure out how many minutes they are, I would kindly explain to them that they need to count all of the minutes until they get to the one that the long arm is pointing at. Once they've counted all those minutes, I would ask them again. So how many minutes into the fourth hour are we? If they answer correctly, I would tie it up nicely by giving them the right terminology. That means we are, for example, 20 minutes into the fourth hour which means the time is 20 minutes past four. Once I've done that, then I would play around with the arms and keep asking them those same questions until I'm confident that they know how to tell the time. And each time they answer correctly, I would tie it up with the terminology. That means it is 20 minutes past three or 30 minutes past one, whatever the case is. Again, as I've said many times in this video, this is a rough guide. So play around with it according to your child's needs. But the point is you must start off with the theory. Those four facts, or in other words, those four principles, you have to start off with them. Then once they get that, move on to explaining the parts of an analog clock. Explain to them how each part of the clock helps us to see what time it is. Parents, I really hope this video helped. If your child is struggling, not just with telling time, but with other areas in math as well, please feel free to go down to my website and schedule a consultation with me because I am an online math tutor and I love helping young children improve their skills in math. The website and all other important details are down in the description. Thanks once more. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.